done. We're in. We're ready to go. Exciting now. Can't wait to start. No, I'm so bored of talking about it. I just want to do it. Real. I'm scared. I'm scared. Kilimanjaro is a dormant volcano. At first sight, it looks peaceful. But first impressions can be deceptive. It's daunting and it's dangerous. Last minute worries start to surface. Well, me and Cheryl have both got problems with our feet. I think it's all the stupid dancing in heels, like that big and that wide. And so we've got problems with the nerves in our feet, which gives us bad pain in our toes. My foot is swollen, so um, not the best, best way to start. Sun cream. Good Irish skin like mine. <laughs> Seriously, the only thing we talk about consistently is the wing and pooing situation, because we're all slightly worried about it, to be honest. See, I don't I go red, you see. Blue to white to pink to red <laughs> to back to blue. That's kind of the way I work. I don't want to get all bunged up. Cheryl wants to get bunged up. I, I want to flow freely. Gary's had serious back problems. He's worried they've returned. I must be honest, after that horrendous car journey, I've really seized up. I'm just thinking a day at a time at the moment. That's all I can do. Kilimanjaro is a tough climb. Around 20,000 people a year attempt it, and a third don't make it. Six months ago, our intrepid climbers had a full MOT to make sure they were roadworthy. We're going to get an ECG, which is an electrical recording of the heart. Okay. Your resting heart rate's 50 at the moment, so that's very good. Mm. Do you feel your heart thumping and racing very quickly, or...? Only when I'm looking at you, Doctor. Right. You've never had any palpitations feeling your heart thumping and racing? Yes. On many occasions. Usually before I go on stage. <laughs> can I ask you to slip your T-shirt off so I can examine you quickly? Is that alright? Of course right? you can. <laughs> can you feel your heart? I'm holding it down. <laughs> oh, I don't like it. Cold jelly coming up. Why does it have to be cold? No ice cream. Can you not heat it? I could. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so many jokes, so little time. <laughs> so, to examine it, I'm going to need to ask you to take your top off. So, um, I guess we should ask you chaps to leave. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. Good luck, everybody. Good luck, Gary. Thanks, Ben. Well done, team. Good luck. Come on, Gary. Come on, Gary. Inspirational words. words. Yeah. Let's do it. Is that, now. Is that blind and... <laughs> That's all we need for now. Yeah. Yeah. Give plenty more chances. OK. Yeah. Let's get it. Let's do it. Enjoy. Come on. Let's split it. Do it. Hang on a minute, it's a bit steep. Look at Alicia oh, well, chilling out with a minstrel. Yeah, she's a minstrel. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing, I want we to come on. This is the first bit, guys. So each day, you lead me all the way. You couldn't go day out one. on Saturday. No, wait until that was over. Till First serious bit of climbing. <laughs> the hinge and bracket, chatting away like they're just going for a stroll in the, the park. Old, the old days. The good old days. All the BBC One morning shows. TV's not like it was, is TV it? TV ain't like it was in my day. Supposedly every day is going to be different. In the forest today, obviously, it's quite some steep hills. But then tomorrow we're going to break the forest. And be in like a kind of a more rockier terrain. At least the sun isn't out. This will be a lot harder. Think slow, guys. You're taking Think slow. Yeah. Steep. I'd love to say we've been walking for three days, or even 12 hours. But I think the reality is it's been about 20 minutes. We're in great hands, no doubt about that. Raj and the team, you know, I'm delighted, you know, we're going up the mountain with them. I wouldn't want to be going up without them, that's for sure. 
But these are, these lads know what they're doing. I mean, Raj has gone up Everest twice, which is very impressive. Yeah. Ah. Uh, oh, no. Stop it. <laughs> I want Manuel. to hold on my hand. Don't worry, there's loads of us back here. I just said we had no idea it was going to be like Can okay. I just say, for the benefit of the tape, the men are six foot, right, and I'm five foot three, and I've got the same size backpack, so I'm not being a wimp. I'm just getting a little assistance. She's doing really well. Embarrassing, I've got my own crew. <laughs> my phone's just gone off. I've got a text. Hey! I hope it's from you saying it was only it's from joke. me, mate. Get, it says get a move on. <laughs> You're holding everyone up. Fern, can you feel anything up your trousers? Oh, don't say stuff like I feel that. like I've got little things up my trousers. Oh, oh, oh my god! Nice Let everybody well. know. There are loads. Oh, you ever seen anyone get up a mountain quicker? <laughs> Don't mess with that. That was horrible. Oh, so um, nothing like uh, spin sex to get you up a bloody mountain. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're honest. No, 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 they're right. They're right. They're right. They're right. The Kilimanjaro Nine is just four hours into a seven-day test of strength and determination. They're going to have to survive plummeting temperatures, snow, rain and pain. The climb will take them to nearly 6,000 metres. It'll literally take their breath away. Only the fittest will make it to the top. Go, 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 Just across the water in Dublin. Ronan. It's going to be on the 50th one of these now. Good, keep it going, keep it going. Four, that's it. Five, really good. We don't want to beat each other, it's not like that. Seven, that's it. Eight, and again. Wow, maybe some of us want to beat each other. <laughs> Ben Shepherd is training his arse off. Like the molar and the drill. I love Ben. I love him so much. I don't want to turn up and not be able to make it because I haven't quite done enough training, you know. Cheapers. <laughs> No worries about fitness for the army of porters. Always one jump ahead, they're already setting up camp. Wow! Yes! Wow! Happy day. Woo! amazing! Oh, happy day! Thank you, man. Wow. Right, where's Ant and Deck? <laughs> what do we do now, then? Which I'll one's our here, ten? Then. We know. Who's in there now, then? You don't want to take it yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, touch of a sweaty back. Yeah. Oh, there's an, there's an actual toilet. Yeah. You want me to go first, do you? All right. I don't mind going first. No, I'm definitely I going before you are. <laughs> you go for the sport. I think there's going to be a separate toilet for sport. Oh, the bliss. One, I reckon, so. The power's on. We've got our own separate right, room. Where's, where's the spa? Yeah. Oh, Proper yeah. toilet. Yeah. Spa that way. And uh, you got some masseuse. Massage. massage. Yeah. Beautiful. No, you're joking. Can we have a seat, guys? Yeah. Go on in. Oh, really? Oh, no. No. Oh, damn. <laughs> 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 I've got the bedside table. Yeah. Some things oh, are looking yeah. up. There's a little masseuse <laughs> down the way. <laughs> the loser GMTV are quite like that. Um, can I ask a question? Where's the toilet roll? Well, Fern's got her little wet wipes thing, so I can hear the packet rustling. <laughs> Are you going in? I'm going in. Will you stand guard? Do you know what? I've never, ever had a pee in a tent in a hat before. <laughs> OK, now, don't be alarmed, Ben. 
Right. I mean, do you really want me to stand here and listen? <laughs> so this is my new home. Um, this is uh, Shade, Fern and Denise. This is where we're living, our casa. Oh, dude. Seriously? Girls represented by the orange. And then all the boys, I don't know who's in who, but they're all in the green tents there. Woohoo! This over here is literally the best thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and then inside, a proper loo! It flushes, you just pull that little bit out of the bottom and all the evidence is cleared away. <laughs> I might be here for a long time. <laughs> I've had a lot of water. Brilliant. Really pleased. Really pleased. Everyone's happy. Seems good. Cam's beautiful, isn't it? Gary brought the Killy Nine together and they saw for themselves why Comet Relief money is so vital. At this clinic, we found three-year-old Shayla. She's delirious with a 40-degree temperature. Her mother and grandmother have carried her for miles across country to get here. They must get Shayla to the nearest hospital, but it's miles from here, and she's running out of time. In Africa, a mother loses a child to malaria every 30 seconds. Oh my God, I don't think any one of us... Uh, I don't think any one of us didn't cry. I mean, it was heartbreaking. That heartbreak goes on for thousands of African families every day. Malaria is one of the continent's biggest killers. The poorest and the youngest are worst affected. But the shocking truth is that it's treatable and preventable. An anti-malaria bed net costs just five pounds. That's why they're here, to raise as much money as they possibly can. It's been a chaotic day, you know, you guys came in quite tired. Just really stay mentally relaxed. It's so important, this mountain, because higher up with the altitude, people do get stressed out, trust me. So the more you relax about everything else, you can just focus on the mountain. That's what I really want you to do. Just enjoy the trip for yourselves, OK? Look at them giggling over there. <laughs> <laughs> a name giggling is psychotic. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> 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 Oh my God. Is this not break? We keep going. <laughs> They're still going. It's a terrifying thing is every time we feel like we're getting somewhere, just in the distance, you see water nowhere. up the next hill. <laughs> Here we are. I didn't realise it would be this bad. I could feel a slow teddy coming on. Do you know what all I've done is hear myself moan for three days? I'm sick of hearing myself. I'm actually sick of hearing myself, that's all I do. Ah, my back, ah, my leg, oh, I'm sick of it. No time to moan for Chris. He still has to do a live broadcast for Radio 1. Um, we're about to do um, my first live link back to my radio show. They're doing awfully well without you. No, I wouldn't say awfully well. There's a, there's a little, there's just something missing, do you know what I mean? You know, like when Mark oh, okay. takes lead vocal on one of your songs, it's just not. <laughs> I can hear, I can oh, hear my radio good. show. And listen to my show, it's weird, isn't it? You've never done it live before. Oh, well, not from a mountain. You can see the sun is shining if you ever wonder. I can see the moon and I see myself clear. You can take the road that takes you to the stars now. Hi. Wow, that is something else. Stay there. 
Oh! <laughs> 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 Don't look at me. There's a hazard on this mountain. It's Ben Shepherd's app. You can take a road that takes you to the stars. No, I can take a road that I see me through. I can take a road that I see me through. I can take a road that I see me through. The climbers are at three and a half thousand meters. Yeah, we had, have we got any altitude sickness yet? No. There's a couple I mean, of headaches floating headaches. about, but they're not severe at the moment. Yeah. The altitude giggliness is coming back as well. Yeah. That's a yeah. We like that. That's, that's good fun. <laughs> None of them have gone into this with their eyes closed. They were all warned. Around about a third of people who attempt Kilimanjaro don't make it. Right. Because they have to turn back because of the altitude sickness that, right. they, that they get. Um, there are lots of problems which range from simple things like breathlessness, headaches, uh, all the way through to death. Is it that order? Headaches, <laughs> breathlessness, <laughs> death. There's no kind of middle ground between losing your breath and dying. It's, it's, it's very rare we go death first. Right. He needs to hold his hand because he's scared. At the National Sports Centre, there is a special chamber to simulate the very high altitudes they'll be experiencing. There'll be people in the, in the group who will respond very well, almost unaffected, and there'll be those who will respond really very badly. And it's those guys who are going to respond very badly we've really got to focus on. Just a normal day at the gym. That's lovely. In an altitude chamber. What are you doing? We're going uphill. Level 20? We're going uphill. We're going uphill. <laughs> so weird. So your heart instantly thinks, oh, there's a little bit less oxygen, so your heart starts to pump a little bit harder. Right. To try and compensate. The worst case scenario is that people do, do die at Kilimanjaro. People die climbing Kilimanjaro. Yeah. When Gary Barlow rang me and said, Do you want to climb a mountain? I was like, Yeah! Easy! Brilliant. He didn't say, Oh, why would people have died doing it? That didn't come in. Yeah. Actually, you, did, you are seriously doing very well. Marathon runner Ronan is left gasping in the thin air. It's just this mad sensation, you know, you get really light in the head. And you're feeling you're struggling for him. <laughs> you're, you're, you're kind of pulling from your lungs constantly, kind of. It's a weird sensation. Chris is totally bemused. I'm feeling all right. I don't really understand what's going on. They've put us in a freezer in shorts and t-shirts. <laughs> Two pieces of gym equipment, right? I don't fully understand what this is all about. I, I tell you what, that is, that is outstanding. It's done say, that, say that to the camera, what you just said. Outstanding. That is no. outstanding. No. Outstanding response. That's so typical of you. Since that day he came top, we haven't heard the last. Honest, haven't heard the last. That's right, breakfast TV boy. He's all smiles now. Yeah. Come on, boys. Yeah. He could be annoying everybody else really quite well if uh, if he's feeling as good as he did in the chamber. Once you were a young man, but now you are old. You're over the hill. You're going through enough. So, <laughs> I'm sorry you have to do this this morning. Na, 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 na. Cheryl picked me up today because I was just thinking it was really hard and I was just thinking I'm not going to make it. I was really worried about making it. So we had a little chat. Oh, Chris. You think you've got problems? My trousers keep falling down. I mean, well, that's why I've changed them. I think when you've been walking in for a couple of days, they get baggy. 
was telling her how great she was doing, and then we kind of poked each other up a bit. You know what? It could be worse. You could be camping in the middle of nowhere and climbing a great big, <laughs> massive mountain. <laughs> oh. You're right. Bottom of my back's twanging. Every time you say something like that and you're kind of feeling a bit fed up and miserable, you're really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't help me. You just help yourself. <laughs> Gary's back problem has got worse. He's forced to take a shortcut. Just have a little patience. I woke up in the middle of the night and my back was in agony. Every step's been painful. I was a bit disappointed I had to do a different route. Order these two. Jeez. This morning, to be honest, was the first morning I felt like I might not do it. I might not get there. I'm gutted, to be honest. That's where we're going. I'm hoping, with a bit of rest, the Sarvo, nice dinner, bed early, I'm hoping that things will change tomorrow. You never know. A little prayer before bed, maybe, tonight. Have a little patience. Gary and his team know that every penny this climb raises will go towards making a real difference to other people's lives. Denise saw for herself how urgently Comet Relief Cash is needed in the battle against malaria. Anyone can get malaria, but children are particularly vulnerable. Twins Waisua and Babiro were admitted to their local hospital in Uganda with the disease. They were suffering from malaria and they were admitted because it was severe. So a baby boy and a baby girl? Yeah, baby girl, twins of five months. Last night, unfortunately, Waisua passed on. He's supposed to be buried today. Okay, and is the, the mother here? Yes, the mother is here. Most so this is your little girl? Mm. She's still mm. very, very poorly, mm. isn't she? Mm. So you, will you be able to tell me what happened to your little baby boy? When they got malaria, we took them to the clinic, but then they got worse and we had to take them to the hospital. Then Boyasa got pneumonia. It was all too much for him. He didn't make it. When did you lo you lost your baby this morning? Was that in the hospital? Her mother-in-law saw the baby die, so she got informed from the mother-in-law. You're much stronger than me. <laughs> Bubire seemed better, but Agnes is really worried about her again and wants to take her back to the hospital in our car. There's no time to waste. There never is when a child has malaria. Every family here knows that only too well. I just hope we got here in time. That's why I'm here today walking up this mountain. If the money we raise can make a difference, protecting families, then every step will be worth it. I, I know I can do it, and I'm strong enough to do it. That one image that, if I find it tough, will be of that little baby girl I saw yesterday. Up here, yeah? Hope you come to the show. Oh, do you want to get up? Huh? We've got climbing machines. You guys are good to go. Well then, show. It's been far to tougher than I ever imagined over the past two days, but today I feel like I'm starting to get it now, right? Okay, this is what we do. Yeah. It's been an easier walk, which helped. 
but yeah, I get it now. Where the first two days I was like, it was shocking. Yeah. Really, what? Is I, I hadn't thought mentally prepared. Really good, Chris. That's got to be worth a pound, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it Five good. quid. What's your an overweight man scared of heights climbing a mountain? Mate, you're really slick there. <laughs> you're not better than other people. Can't we, we just, can't we just to. pretend this is the top of Kilimanjaro? Yeah, yeah, why not? There's some fake snow this in post by this Who's going to know? Then we can go down. We're, we're eating so much as oh well. My God, we haven't I've never stopped. eaten so much in my life, ever. We've got pockets full of sweets, like cashew Nan nuts, bellies. raisins. Talking of which, I've got some fruit pastels in there. Yeah, actually, I've got some nuts in my pocket. So have I. <laughs> It's getting right on my nerves going for a wee. It's very undignified. Right. I just, I'm sometimes... You called me earlier, didn't I you? I did. I, just... I called Fern. I could just see in the distance. I thought, what's that? <laughs> little old me I squatting. could see this little white bottom from behind a rock. Raj and Fiona, the team's medics, spot a young British climber with severe altitude sickness. Their quick response probably saved his life. Seeing someone be stretchered down very carefully in, on yeah. oxygen, the implication of, of how difficult it really is if we don't get it right, I think sort of really hit me. Yeah. When we and his eyes were like rolling in his head, you know? It's a wake up call, isn't it? But it's the reality of where we are, you know? How high are we? 3,880, I believe. I'm a bit worried about tomorrow. I'm worried about they're tomorrow. Gonna, they're going to watch us very carefully tomorrow. Yeah. It's definitely going to hit us, this altitude thing. Yeah. <laughs> Jazz hands. Hey? Jazz hands. OK. <laughs> razzle dazzle them. So listen. <laughs> <It's always so laughs> razzle dazzle them. It's serious, this. Come on, Give it's serious. Give the old razzle dazzle. Right, so Gary's got a bad back, as we know. He's, uh... Muscles are in spasm. His lats that go down the middle of his back are in spasm. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Fern brought some tiger balm with her, which is this brilliant, brilliant muscle rub. It does make his back feel like it's on fire. It gives him a little bit of um, relief from the pain, because every step, to be honest, is, uh, is killing him. The added side effect is the girls love the smell. So Gary was very popular. Very popular this morning. <laughs> Listen, when I walk past all the girls today with my tiger balm on, it's like the Lynx advert. <laughs> 30 seconds in Gary Barlow's tent. That's all. It's all gone to my head. I think it's the altitude, we're all going to be barmy. None of us are making any sense. Yeah. Who are you? I'm Gary Barlow. Oh, really? Yeah, from Take That. <laughs> Do you know any of our songs? No. We did. Why am I talking like that? We did. Uh... <laughs> the high altitude is beginning to affect the climbers. When they leave camp, they're all feeling the strain. After only a few hundred yards, it's clear that Fern, who was sick during the night, is in real trouble. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Fern. Hey, Roger. Hey, yeah, feeling a little bit sick again, so. Yeah, sure, no worries. We'll just chill here for a bit. Yeah. There's the time. Sun's coming out. Yeah. Alicia is also suffering. Altitude can affect people in different ways. Maybe if I just cry and get it out of the way. <laughs> if Fern doesn't feel better soon, her climb will be over. This tablet's really good for sickness, but the other thing that's actually quite good is good, it's good for altitude as well as sickness, so it's kind of killing two birds with one stone. As a last-ditch attempt to get Fern moving, the expedition doctor gives her an injection to stop the nausea. <sighs> Alicia is also determined to beat the altitude, and with good reason.
Mama Hosiana is a district nurse. Looking after people with malaria is a big part of her job. She comes in here, she's like a ray of sunshine, you know, and she's like this force of energy, a force of light. She comes in here and they all worship her and they all love her because she's coming to help. In a family with no mosquito nets, the disease can travel fast. Hi, kwa ajili ya kumwenzi mwenzetu ambaye ametangulia mbele za haki naomba tuinamishe vichwa chini. This is the grave of Sam Bwe, who has just died of malaria. His widow, Telly C.A., has malaria too, and so do most of her six children. Her whole family is affected by it, and it's just such a, I can't, I can't even begin to imagine. I can't even begin to know how this lady feels. A net stops mosquitoes carrying malaria from one person to another, and prevention is better than cure. They have no protection. None. And it's the repetition of it. It's having it, treating it, and then it coming back again. And it's like a cycle that at some point needs to be, we need to put a clog in that cycle. I think people in England take things for granted. We complain about our NHS system, and yes, it's not perfect, but believe me, it's far better than what they've got here. We've got a cheek to complain. That's what I think. Mungu ipokeru ya marehemu peponi. Amen. It makes you realise that it doesn't, just doesn't take a lot to solve the problem. You're not asking to change the world, you're just asking for a net. Because even walking the mountain, you know, we still have more luxuries than what they've got here. I feel like if I moan on that mountain, I have to slap myself around the face. Like, how dare I even moan? Can't forget to breathe slow. Come from one to ten with my eyes closed. Cause ladies take it in and get composed. Oh, 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 yeah. Before I lose it, get composed. You know, I feel out of breath. OK. Do you want to stop? No, I don't want to stop. Dizzy? I feel drunk. It's not bad, I suppose. OK. That's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. So, the Dynamox hasn't cured the dizzy, the dizzy the giddiness yet, though, has it? The giggles. Oh, how funny. I don't know where I go. Kilimanjaro is mighty cool. Kilimanjaro is mighty cool. Cold, cold, don't bother me. Cold, cold, don't bother me. Cause the red nose people are relying on me. Cause the red nose people are relying on me. Pain! Pain! In my back! In my back! Pain! Pain! In my arms! In my arms! But we don't care! That was the toughest day, that was the toughest walk. It just gets so bleak. Yeah. Oh, man. I have done loads of different things, as Ben has, charity-wise, and walks 400 miles across Ireland, but... Nothing, nothing has ever felt like this. This is tough. Mm. It's the real deal. But this pressure that's constantly on your head, squeeze it. If you've ever dived quite deep in the sea, it's the same yeah. feeling. It's just that... I'm getting my moment. Chris was awesome today. He was brilliant today. He was really, really great. And his spirits have been high, he's been making us laugh, he's been singing songs, he's been making the porters laugh. Can I cross the river as Gary? <laughs> How are you all doing? You lie. All right. The skies are up above me. That's why the camaraderie has just become yeah. so important. Keeps us going. Coming into camp, it's not just celebrating with each other, it's celebrating with the ports, it's celebrating yeah, with the crew. It's a great feeling when you cross, when you almost cross the line into camp. <laughs> I know, it is. It's euphoria. Here's Cheryl coming in. Hey, hey. She'll cry. Hey, hey. Oh, come on, hey. Against all the odds, Fern has made it.
Hey, Chief B. Hey. How are you? I'm doing bad, mate. Yeah. Where's the bin? We've been waiting. Had a little turn on the hill. You're here at 4,600 metres. That's good, Gary. You're actually at the highest point now where you're going to be before summit night. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. It's a tough night. Yeah. Um, but after today, we're going to be in a prime position for summit. We just remember what I said before about altitude, that um, it may not strike you down when you actually arrive at camp. Some of you can feel OK now, mm. but six, eight, 12 hours later, right. you can start getting it. So remember, this evening, overnight, it might affect you. Fern safely tucked up in bed, to the relief of the rest of the team. I think sort of being able to think about Fern a lot sort of took my mind yeah. off the, the You know, it was nice, kind yeah, of, every so often, someone would go, someone would come up to us and go, Fern's still with us. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, really? Because when she first died, I thought, I didn't think we were going to see it. Because there was one moment where I lost the main group, I ended up being a loner on a rock, and then from this, the distance, I could see Fern coming, I thought, well, if she's... She's doing that, then I'm getting up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because she suffered far really worse well. than anyone. Seeing a little white coat coming up. Oh, yeah. Isn't that brilliant? It was really, really sweet. Are you sleeping? Still dreaming? Still drifting off along? Hi, welcome to my crib. Come on in. Mattress, sleeping bag, smallest. Dirtiest pillow in the world. So this is my day pack, which you can probably see all the climbers climbing with. There's my sticks. These are my trainers, which I'm about to put on after my taking off my stinky boots. And this is my life bag. Little lion. Book with a picture of my girlfriend in that she sent me. Clean pants and shorts, right? Wash bag for the morning. Gloves for tonight, because it's going to get very cold. Uh, Slightly kind of girly gloves, I think you'll agree. I don't have everything I need. It's a tent, and it's raining, and it's freezing cold, and we're, what, 13, 14,000 feet up? There's no uh, hot water, there's no shower, there's no telly, there's no Blu-ray, you know, there's no girlfriend. It's very lonely in here at night. Um, you can't put any pictures up. It's not like being in jail, so that's it. It's uh, cold, it's damp, it's horrible. Ah, uh, but it's home. And it's very orange. It's so simple. I'm fitting the path that you are on. When I'm talking, there's no secret. I'll be really happy when I'm off this stupid rock. Look at it, look, we're in the. It's like being in an episode of Star Trek. But with poles. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Wow, this is beautiful. The walk yesterday was horrible. It was really long. The shower just got into camp, pretty much collapsed. I felt <laughs> sick. And we didn't see it for the rest of the night. And I crawled out of the tent and I got a whiff of the food. Oh. There I had projectile vomit. It was coming out of my mouth, out of my nose. So the doctor injected us, gave me a nice injection in the bottom, which is now killing the small for the eight hour walk. But you know what? I feel like a new woman. And then she kind of appears at breakfast with a full face of makeup and her hair done. And you just think, what? Got is that yeah, natural? Got makeup on. So you're that natural? I don't know. you're so natural and pretty. Embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I never once thought I'm going back down. Well. Didn't you? Not once. That's crazy. <laughs> Christopher's got a little tear. No, no, I'm, I'm like. Oh, it. No, it's not a tear. No, it's just a wind. <laughs> I'm all right. It's not. And Fern's been having a bit of a tricky time, but she's great. She's still with us. She's around somewhere. <laughs> well, there she is. Look. It's definitely been just the hardest two days ever. Like, if I didn't feel sick, I think it'd be tough. But I'd get through it, but feeling sick and having to walk for so many hours mentally is just, it just does you in. It's, there's points this morning where I thought, I just, what, what am I doing? Oh, well, luckily, I've got my amazing mates with me. Ben! Benjamin! I think it's incredible that you, you kept with us and you're still going through all this. 
was just, just amazing. Well, I believe me, there's been times when I don't have more to be here, that is for sure. I've wanted to be anywhere but here. Fern's memories of a trip she took are keeping her going. Hello. Hello. You must be Alice. Yeah, I'm the one. Lovely to awesome. meet you. A few months ago, I went to Uganda to see for myself the effects of malaria on young children. This is a resuscitation room. What are you doing at the moment? This is one of the children we recruited yesterday. Came in with a severe malaria. Right. This little bubble here? This young girl here. Uh, do you think? Yeah, right now it's still a 50-50. Just have to keep watch. Keep watch. The baby's called Evelyn. She's seriously ill. Too many children like her are dying every day in Uganda. That's all because of malaria. And such a young little baby as well. It's just mind-blowing. Vincent also has severe malaria, complicated by anemia. His only hope is an immediate blood transfusion. I've had a for three days and convulsions since today morning. So he's oh. going to have a whole blood transfusion? A whole tra yeah, whole blood transfusion. His but breathing seems very fast. Yeah, it's uh, one of the complications of my year. He won't survive the night without the transfusion but he's so dehydrated that it's hard to find a vein. I just find it so difficult to watch. Um, it just makes me realise even more so how amazing the doctors and nurses are. It, it was some of the most distressing things I've seen. I don't think any part of me could digest what my eyes were seeing. Just the whole thing was so overwhelming and um, I've passed out. Vincent won his battle and pulled through. Just meeting the people that I met in Uganda and thinking of the people and how this money is going to change their lives is definitely... I've had to use that. Like, that was my back, back, back up. Like, really pull that out of the bag when I needed to, and it's really helped. But will it be enough to get Fern through the next challenge, the Barranco Wall? It's good to put your poles away at this stage, please. Yeah, you need to use your hands as well. It's a vertical climb of 300 meters. Right behind you. Walk uphill, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Step up there and just wait over there when you get up, shall we? Okay. It's your breath, isn't it? Yeah. I feel the sun trying to burn the clouds off. I just think it'll scare everybody if they can see how high we are. Yeah. I don't want to see it. We've dropped down there. Cheryl, I'm on Give me your hand. Now, Cheryl, give me your hand now. Now, step across. Thank you. Thank you. Yay! With your right foot, you step across onto him. Big one up. How the hell did you do this? Oh. Oh. I don't know. It was amazing. I just wish there was a view. Look. Look how high we are, look. Nothing. It took, you, really took your mind off the distance yeah. that we were going and the yeah. height we were going and the altitude nonsense and the, the lack of sleep and the cold <laughs> and stuff because you just focused on trying to get up the wall. Trying to get up the wall was great. Really great, love it. 
Don't do it, don't do it again. Yeah, let's go back Come in. Come on. <laughs> oh, for the sake of momentum, I've allowed my fears to get larger than life. And it's brought me to my current agenda, where a planet in that fulfillment has yet to arrive. And I know life is getting shorter. Happy to be at camp. I need a big bowl of hot water to put my feet in. Be nice, wouldn't it? A nice frappuccino. Hey everyone, I'm here in my tent. It's really quiet. Everyone's asleep, I think. I'm the last one up. I don't need a lot of sleep. Um, they've all been snoozing and stuff this afternoon. It's a bit noisy around here. I've heard monkeys and all sorts of things. There's, for some reason, for some reason, cows <laughs> and dogs. Someone's brought a dog. I can't believe someone's brought a dog. It's been a great day, though. It's been like being in Hertfordshire. <laughs> it's been really great. Really great. Gary, turn that thing off. Come to bed. Come on, Gary. 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 Gary, it's getting cold. Come to bed. Good night, everyone. Bid you a fond farewell. <laughs> Job night. Done. Turn it off now, mate. <laughs> Job done. We've got a long old day ahead of us. Yep. Seven, eight hours. Yep. You're not sure which direction we're going to go because we can see them. The Hopefully that team. way. Yeah. The whole team are buzzing today because we're going to go to high camp tonight. Everyone say Kilimanjaro. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And then uh, we're going to get a bit of kip there, a bit of dinner, and then we're going to get up about 1 or 2 a.m. and attempt the summit. All you can do is just keep moving. Do you find a kite? <laughs> you just plowing forward, thinking, I don't know where I'm heading to, but I'm just going to keep walking. And you lose all concept of time, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Are we nearly there? Yeah. Hello, over there! You just keep going. It gets cold, you put on a sweater. It gets warm, you take it off. Okay. If you just keep plodding along. I want to go home. Just going really slow because I'm just forcing myself to walk like a snail. You're looking pretty good at the moment. I just don't like it. My theory is just get up as quick as you can <laughs> and then be out of breath at the top. <laughs> if these lot came to England, they'd laugh at us, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they'd be like, what, lazy? They buddy? would not believe it. <laughs> They wouldn't believe it when I call a car from Kensington to Nottingham. <laughs> Six to eight hours of walking, plod, plod, plod. I'm cut out for burgers and chips, not climbing mountains. <laughs> <laughs> He's loving it, really. Oh, my God. He keeps going. Fern's been so ill for the last couple of days, particularly. It was hard for the team when Fern was sick, and obviously really difficult for Fern. That was really tough. Okie dokie. I'm glad that she's up and running and she's fighting fit. That makes me feel good. I, I mean, I don't know how she's done it. She is the superstar of the climb. We can't believe it. The, the magical feeling of normality is one not to be underestimated. <laughs> it's amazing. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted, ever. There were a couple of moments when she sat in the tent and she said to me, Den, I don't know if I can do this. And then she'll just snap herself out of it and she said, no, I know I can, because we both had the same experience at the same time in Uganda and I think that makes a massive difference to how we feel about doing this climb. See, now when I talk about it, I get emotional. You watch, I'll get up there and I'll be a blubbering wreck. Anyway, moustache. <laughs> Hakuna Matata. I'm very excited. I'm very nervous. This is like no other night. No. Tonight this good. No. No, no. no, no. Don't leave that. Leave that. that. Yeah. Ah, oh, I could rule the. Just, no, don't, no. Don't just, go just there. Leave it. Leave honestly. it. Just. Yeah. Don't. All we need now is have a little bit. No. No, it's not right for here, is it? I think dinner's served. We should go and get. Let's you know, do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's cook while we're ahead. Come in. Come in. We're looking good, and um, tonight 
we're going to go for it. Although we're looking good, it is actually going to be probably for some of you, most of you, or even all of you, the hardest things you've actually done physically or mentally in your lives. We're going to set off. Could be down to minus 10, minus 15 tonight. OK? Right, so thanks for getting us this far, man. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Daytime temperatures make summiting more difficult and dangerous. All climbers begin the ascent in the dark. OK, guys, let's go. Bonus, can't believe we've done it. But I'm ready to go down now, I'm so cold. <laughs> but these guys are amazing. But no, seriously, we all stuck together and helped each other. And it's the most amazing feeling ever. The hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I really wanted to get here and say that was just not worth it, because that was one of the most painful and relentless things I've ever put myself through. But to see the sunrise across this incredible country is just extraordinary. Stay close to me. Stay close to me. Unbelievable. Amazing. We've been talking about this for six months. Since Gary called us, we've been training, we've been stressing, we've been worrying. And we're here. Unbelievable. Thank God for that. <laughs> now show me the way down. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without Davis though. He's dragging me the whole way up. <laughs> this man got me up there. Yes. We've got oils at the top of here. Can you believe it? These guys. These guys have loved Chris all week. They've been making up songs with him. There is little posse. You, you have done it. Hey, how mega is this? Yeah. Job. Yeah, it's 
seemed like a harebrained plan six months ago. But somehow we're here. I can't believe it. Fantastic. Cheers! <laughs> Stretcher for Barlow. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> 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 I've been roaming around, always looking down. Painted faces fill the places I can't reach You know that I can go somebody The last seven days have changed our lives. We've climbed to places beyond our wildest dreams gone on when we wanted to lay down and cry. Pulled together when it looked like we might fall apart. Across Africa, people are dying from a preventable, treatable disease. Here is an opportunity to do something about it. But it needs someone like you to make it happen. I've been roaming around, always looking down at all I... If you've been inspired by the Kilimanjaro 9, you can make a donation to Comic Relief right now. Just text YES to 66609 and Comic Relief will get £5, which could buy a mosquito net to help prevent the spread of malaria. Text costs £5 plus your standard network message charge, and the whole £5 goes to Comic Relief. You must be 16 or over, and please ask the bill payers' permission. For more information, go to bbc.co.uk forward slash red day. There's another comic relief challenge next here on BBC One Scotland as Sir Alan presides over a celebrity battle of the sexes. It's the biggest night in comedy. What's occurring, pussycat? With the biggest stars in entertainment. I need no introduction.